The Simple Content Planner is a Notion template that is designed for the beginner content creator, someone that's looking to get started, or someone that has already started creating content but lacks consistency. This Notion template is intentionally simple because having a lot of features is nice, but it can get confusing and it increases the learning curve to actually start using it. We want you to be able to start using this template today. Now this template has only one purpose, and that is to provide structure for the solo creator so that they can go from only posting when inspiration strikes, which is completely random, to becoming a prolific, consistent creator who posts on a consistent schedule. If that sounds like something you're interested in, over the next few minutes, I'll walk you through the ins and outs of this template so you can hit the ground running with your content creation. If you're a more advanced creator, let's say you've been consistently publishing content, now you have a team and you need collaboration tools, this is not the video for you. We have another template for that, and I'll link the tutorial in the description. All right, now let's get into it. So when you download the template, this should be the first thing that you see. So we have a table of contents here on the left side, and then a brief tutorial section here. Uh, table of contents is, as the name implies, it's there just so it's uh, a quick way so you can access the section you want to. Um, and then the tutorial is just a, a written version of uh, this video, basically. So it's not as in-depth, it's just a brief overview of the different sections of the uh, of this template. Um, and it'll have uh, just general housekeeping and general tips for Notion. And then it'll also have a link to this video, which once it's uploaded to YouTube, I'll put this in here. But moving forward, we have the next thing on the uh, template you'll see is a mobile-friendly idealist. Now we're not gonna get into this right now. We're gonna come back to this later because You'll need the full context of how the system works to understand this. So we're gonna come back to this later. The first section we're actually gonna get into is the content table. Now, this is where you log your ideas and you prioritize them. And starting from left to right, we have an option for episode number. The reason I have episode number is because I actually use this for my podcast, right? So like when I started um, you know, uh, trying to organize my podcast in Notion, uh, I used episode numbers and I have episode numbers in all my titles. I have this here, but if you're not doing podcasts and you don't have something that needs the episode number, or you don't wanna keep track of the number, you can easily just hit delete um, over here. The next column is the release date. This is when you actually plan on releasing the content. After that, we have title. Um, this is where you put the actual idea title or the title of the podcast or video or whatever it is. And the cool thing about this is if you hit this open piece here, you can actually start drafting up your notes. Uh, so like, for example, if you want to write, um, you know, this is a great episode and then you're going to kind of have your intro to the video and you can have your body, you can have your conclusion. You can do whatever you want is what I'm getting at it. Uh, this is basically like your own Word doc within uh, this section here. So uh, not just so you don't just have to like sort this by ideas, but you can actually have the full script. Uh, written in here. So you can have a full rough draft or script or however you want to use it um, in here. And so next section we have is type. So the way I have this set up right now is blog post, video, essay, and podcast. Uh, and that's because that's the type of content that I was working on for my podcast. So we recently started making video essays and we also started doing uh, like blog posts or articles. Um, but for you, if you're working on different platforms, like for example, if you're on Instagram and you want to post reels, you just add a section here that says IG reels, and then you can just turn, you know, you can, that way you can keep track of what type of content is also going out. And then the last column is status. So what we have here is just three options, not started in progress and done. For solo creators, I don't see the need to get more nuanced than this, right? So I know what I'm working on. I know where we are in the process. So if I say in progress, I don't need to differentiate between, uh, you know, it's a rough draft or it's in the editing phase or whatever. I'm still working on it. I know that, right? So in our more advanced template, we actually do break it down into pre-production, post-production and production um, in the in progress section. Um, but for, for, you know, a solo creator, I don't think you necessarily need this. You can add like a rough draft section. Um, you can add, you know, whatever kind of ways you want to differentiate it. But by default, we have it as not started in progress and done, which I think to get started, to keep things simple is more than enough. Now, one thing to note here is that this view in the table, the one we're looking at right now, if you change the, the status here to done, it'll move it off the table. And that's because we've filtered this out for only things that are not started or to do. So the way I have it like this is because when you come into the dashboard, you're going to want to see, okay, like what are the options of what are the things that I'm working on? What are the, you know, what's next in the pipeline? You don't necessarily need to think about 
what you've already done. But it can be useful to have a list of all the things you've already done, which is why we have this kind of completed section here. So in the completed section, we can see we just moved this to done and it's here. So if I wanted to reference this, I could go here. Another like useful thing for this might be to duplicate it. So like if this was like a really good interview and I want to follow the format again, I want this whole doc that I wrote, you know, all these notes that I had, incredibly detailed notes. If I wanted to just copy that, um, I could just duplicate this into a new thing, as you can see here. And then what we'll do is uh, we'll just change the status to not started. And we'll, we'll actually move this one back to not started too, just so it's, uh, it's there. So you can see this new one popped up right here. And we're just gonna delete this because I was just showing you as an example, but that'll give you a, a good starting point so the next thing we have is the calendar view. Now there's one reason in particular why I had to have this on this dashboard and I really like it. A lot of times when you're creating part-time, so like let's say you have a full-time job um, and things just got busy or you know something else came up and you weren't able to uh, you know, meet the target, meet the release date that you were scheduling for yourself. What you can do is literally just drag this, let's say on the 28th you got busy, you just drag it to the 29th or the 30th, whatever you wanna do, right? And so that way, it's, it's literally is drag and drop. And there's something that's just like really nice about just having um, a drag and drop option here. The other thing that's really nice is like, I have this set at uh, a week view because I'm really only looking at like, okay, what do I have to do this week? Um, you can change this to a month view by coming in here, um, going to layout and then changing it to month view. I'm not gonna do that. I just really need to see, I have like three pieces of content that I'm working on creating. And if you're a solo creator, it's just gonna be you. So you don't necessarily need to look out like a month in advance, all the different things you have planned. You just have this week, I need to work on these three pieces of content and you know, it'll get you focused on those three pieces. And that's why we had it set up this way. All right, so the next section we have on here is the Kanban view, the board view. Uh, what I like about this is I find this really helpful for prioritizing and planning. So let's say I have, um, you know, like a bunch of ideas that I have in here, like a not started, for example. I also have these ideas up here and not started, but I find it easier to prioritize over here in the board view than up here. So like, if I'm looking at this, I don't know, like I can, I can still do the same thing here. I can put this in progress, but there's something that's more satisfying about, um, you know, dragging it from like, okay, we're not working on this right now. This, we're gonna start working on this this week. Right, and then there's also something satisfying about when you finish something, uh, and then you you know hit done, boom, it's done. And the way, uh, by the way, I have this set up is that it's filtered for just um, just showing the done items that you completed this month. So you can change that and keep all the done items or change it to this week or whatever it is. Um, but the way I have it is uh, just this month, so it doesn't have too many content pieces that you have done that are clogging up this Kanban board view section because the main purpose here really is to help you take uh, items from like an idea, then prioritize which ones to focus on and then take them across the finish line and have that satisfaction of like, yes, I got this done. These are, you know, and then it just feels really nice if you get three pieces of content done, you can kind of, uh, you know, then kind of say, I got three pieces of content done. Look at that, it just feels really nice. So now that you have full context of the system here, let's go through the mobile friendly idea list. Now you may be looking at this page and thinking this is super simple, what's the point of this? But there's a reason for that. We purposely kept this super simple and super clean and not having too many features because we wanted this to be easy to use to quickly capture ideas. Inspiration can strike at any time. It can be in the shower. It can be when you're washing the dishes. It can be when you're driving a car. When that moment comes, when the ideas are flowing, you have to stop what you're doing and capture those ideas. And so by default, people either use like a pen and paper uh, or they're using Notes app on their phone. Now the problem with those methods is it's not synced to your process, right? So by adding it to this list, what it'll do, like I'll show you for example. So if I just had an idea, let's make a video on Notion AI. Um, that's a pretty good idea that we should probably do at some point. Now what that does is, you know, over here, all we had to do is the same thing you would do in your Notes app, right? You're just writing the text. But what you can also do is then turn this into a page and start, uh, you know, writing your thoughts, you know, whatever is flowing, you can start writing and, you know, it'll be there. But what it does is when you go back to the actual simple content planner, it'll have an entry here. And so when it's time to actually start prioritizing and, you know, looking at ideas, you can say, okay, like, let, let me start working on this next. And then you can say, okay, I want to work on this next. I'm going to turn it into an Instagram reel and let's have this, you know, let's aim to have this done by next week. 
right? Now the point of this mobile friendly idea list is just to have that place of capture. And by capturing it in here, it'll automatically add that idea to the rest of your workflow. So it doesn't matter where you are or what you're doing, you always have a way to get new ideas into the pipeline and get them in a place where you can easily get them started. And that is all for the Simple Content Planner. Hope this helps in the content creation journey. The link to download this template is in the description. Now, if you do end up downloading and using this template, we'd love to hear your feedback. Uh, the link to do so is right at the bottom of the template. So if you like it, or you don't like it, you have features that you think would be great to add, just click this link and it'll take you to a form to actually uh, submit that feedback. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing all the content you create.